What's up, everybody? It's Flake. I've got another deck that I want to show you. Now, this is one that was kind of floating through my mind for a while, especially when the cards were announced, things like She Who Knows and whatnot. You kind of put this stuff together and say, that's a really good build-around card, much like Keltulis is a build-around card. So I figured, let's put the two together. Now, it doesn't necessarily make sense when you're thinking Carapace and putting Veil on stuff, but I promise you, this deck today is absolutely eviscerating the meta. All those jackpot types, all of those Koshe clowns are getting absolutely dusted by this deck and uh, in, in great, great fashion as well. There's very minimal um, control out there uh, other than Nilfgaard. So if you could dodge those Nilfgaard uh, lists, uh, you can pretty much do some uh, good work. Now I'm going to show you how this deck operates. We're going to run through the deck list and I'm going to give you a very brief uh, sort of way that this deck operates and then uh, probably I'm going to see if I can't clip some actual games at the end of this so you can see how the game operates. Because I know that a lot of the comments I get are, hey, your videos, your guides, there's no gameplay at the end of it and I want to see how the deck operates. So I'm going to jam in some games at the end of this so you guys can actually take uh, a better look at how this goes all right we don't necessarily have a, a name for this list um, you know what we're gonna call it kapowski and uh for for various reasons you guys could probably understand why and if not well you're maybe not as old as i am basically kapowski is kelly kapowski uh from saved by the bell and we're playing Kelly, so here he goes. All right, so we're all going to be uh, under the 15 provision umbrella of Carapace, the leader ability. And uh, here's how this deck busts out. All right, so we've got two times Wild Hunt Hound. Having dominance in this list is not going to be too much of a problem. It's a very decent proactive play. It grows over time, and uh, it really helps out in terms of just maintaining pressure over time that your opponent's going to have to deal with. It might eat a lock, a removal, who knows what, but it's definitely a, a valuable four provision card to jam down. Double Witch's Apprentice is just fantastic. Now, this is a card that, um, you know, frankly, it's, it's very powerful in the right capacities and in this capacity of having a lot of big units on a row uh it's it's very 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 efficient in terms of just keeping your opponent on their toes this is a list uh sorry this is a card that your opponent has to answer fairly early with cheaper cards or later with an expensive card so uh tough for them to deal with uh we've got the one squirrel which is a tech choice this is a card that is probably not going to stay in this list i think i kept it in here because um against Nilfgaard and the Coup de Grasse, I think that it's necessary. It's helpful in that regard. Um, but I have found that it's really whiffing on other against other lists. Now, today, when I played this deck, I played about 15 games with it. I played against Nilfgaard twice, and I barely even touched Northern Realms. So the Squirrel is really out there to hunt for Coup de Grasse, and it's also out there to hunt for Amphibious Assault. Um, but at the same time, I did manage to use this to go ahead and snipe a uh, warrior out of a warrior, a Skelligan warrior list. Um, but uh, if you're suspecting that there might be like an eager and that might get eaten as well, the squirrel can be useful. I haven't really found um, another card that is really going to be as impactful that I'm not planning on mulliganing away later. So uh, for now, the squirrel stays. Double packed if you're playing Keltulis. This is typically what you're going to always have here. Just cards that give you value without putting extra bodies on the board so your Keltulis can continue to, to get some work done. Boost by six, give Doom. If you have a Veil on it, it's not Doom. But there's nothing really that we care that has Doomed anyways because we're not really re relying on, on bringing anything back. And if you want to be uh, cheeky about it, you can give Doom to your opponent's card on their side, like their Maddock or their Boat. Uh, in a round where you can afford to just donate them some points. So that's always an option as well. A single spores, because in lists like Jackpot, in lists uh, that run their own piggies, this is a good four provision reset card that could do some work. But against Jackpot, this thing just crushes. Uh, mulligan this away against uh, any kind of Skelligan lists. It's not really going to help you out, but uh, that is in there as well. Crow's Eye. Now, Crow's Eye was uh, I was convinced to play this because this list needs more purification and it's a purify that boosts and doesn't put a body on the boards again for Keltulis value if they do something to your Keltulis that they lock one of your series uh so your series uh dash let's say you can definitely use this to help out it's also just a swift boost on something if there's a problem um now we do have uh more 
Purify. Naglfar's Taskmaster is an offensive Purify if necessary, but on your own side, there's so much locks and nonsense going up there that you're probably going to want the extra Purify to help you out. Uh, get rid of a Bounty, get rid of a Poison if necessary, uh, and if you need to, you can Poison, uh, or sorry, you can Purify through your enemy's Defender and uh, get to work with uh, your other big uh, damage spells. One A-Rush, um, purely just to sort of, you know, give extra value for that one unit riding solo. This card is uh, pretty decent, but just keep in mind where and when you're going to play this because there's often times where you're like, oh crap, A-Rush, I forgot, and now nothing works. A single Alzer's Thunder. Uh, this was, at one point in my mind, going to be an artifact compression, but I think Alzer's Thunder is just as fine. Uh, damaging something out there, like let's say you're damaging... Um, Ba, ba, ba. What, what can get damaged? Um, Horson, I guess. You can damage horse. You can kill a Horson with this. You can kill, um, you know, i um, thinking Jackpot here, but like the Tax Collectors or the Passiflora Peaches. There's a bunch of things that you could just go ahead and zap. A single one of these is going to solve a problem ne uh, if, when necessary. Maxi to fix your draws. It's a six point body for five. Uh, pretty good. Uh, this is also pretty decent when your opponent is doing some silly shenanigans on top of your deck if they're Nilfgaard. But just in case, you can always find what you need with this card. Uh, we're going to go with Parasite because, well, six points of removal or six points of boof boost are going to be fantastic. And a six point um, kill on something like, let's say, a Dunka or uh, your opponent's Witch Apprentice. There's all kinds of options for you to use this to kill something. So you're going to have a good time with this bad boy. Uh, moving along, Phantom and Beast. Again, engines that just tick and tick and tick, and they feel good. Now, those are going to be supported uh, by a card later, which we'll talk about. But Nithral is in here as well. Again, maintain dominance. This is something that you're going to drop onto a round uh, that you plan on going deep into. You just put, give it a little uh, Carapace hat on it. Veil, protect it, give it dominance, and you're good to go. Uh, Imilaris Wrath, a good card to uh basically just drop in and uh you know crap on your opponent for a lot of points you're gonna have some pretty tall units and dealing damage to their key units is going to be pretty clutch whether it's killing a koshe or uh anything else that's problematic um you know like a oh i don't know a jacques let's say and uh finally uh here's that support card it's the karen theor r final now at nine provisions you're like why are you playing this instead of something like osrol uh, for example, but I have started this list with um, with Eager and Osril, and it has only been awkward and not very good. I find that the Caranthir has enough excellent targets that you're going to want to hang on to it. In reality, this on almost anything is fantastic. You put the Caranthir with a Beast or with a Phantom, uh, and you got an extra engine ticking, or you jam it on something like a Witch Apprentice, and that is a two-point a turn engine as well if the uh, if everything's right. Now, you can also, if you're afraid of uh, locks and such, jam it on a Cave Troll to eat up removal or a lock as well. Uh, I wouldn't recommend putting it on Siri, Keltulis, or She-Who-Knows, but it's always out there as an option. I've found exceptional value with this. Uh, Cave Troll, of course, is a defender. Just gives your opponent something more worrisome to, uh, or more more work to get to your more important cards. The Cave Troll is doing a good job of just protecting your big pieces. Siri Dash is there as well uh, to go ahead. Now, on Blue Coin, you're probably going to want to drop this and protect it with Crystal Skull. Uh, you have a myriad of ways to continue to boost it. Just be wary of what you're playing against. If it's a deck that probably runs a Heat Wave, just keep that in mind. Uh, but uh, if you are if you have good intuition, you could probably play this just naked on the board and uh, boost it after and maybe save some of those things. Like uh, on Red Coin, you don't have the benefit of Crystal Skull to boost it up, but that doesn't mean that this card's going to be inefficient on red coin if you can put it behind a defender let's say and then continue to boost it with things like pact or parasite then you're going to be in good shape this is a card that really gets your opponent to rethink their round strategy because if they cannot answer this swiftly they are going to have to probably bounce out of the round in a timely fashion otherwise uh series really going to uh, cause some issues so i really 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 uh i love this card in general um i think it's just that right level of power level where it's you can deal with it you got to protect it it's it's a investment style card uh, we do have heat wave in here because uh heat wave is just so clutch uh i forgot that we also have naglfar and naglfar is uh, purely just to go ahead and 
get our, our gold cards where necessary. Uh, f and uh, now comes the piece de resistance, which is Keltulis. It's a Keltulis list, friends. So you know that this deck's going to be revolving around protecting this, exploiting Keltulis as an excellent pressure tactic. This is... I wouldn't say that Keltulis is necessarily a win condition. Keltulis is more so a pressure uh, tactic. When behind... Uh, a veil or a defender or whatnot it really gives your opponent a tough time to deal with i don't need to explain this any further frankly you've seen this card and the deck that surrounds it uh on in tournaments on ladder it is a fearsome fearsome foe and uh Keltula, she does what she does best which is really make things nasty for you now she who knows is the other card that is a centerpiece to this now it is the tallest unit from a base uh strength perspective so she will always uh be bringing herself to the other side. You do not want to veil this. You do not want to use a carapace charge on your she who knows. Please don't do that. Unless it's round three, let's say, okay, and uh, it gets poisoned or something and you want to protect it in that regard. That's fine. But keep in mind, if you put a veil on her, she's going to try, uh, she's going to do her darndest to give resilience to herself and that veil tag will say no, no. No, 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 no. So don't do that. Uh, all right, so basic way to do this is runs as a standard Keltulis list. The only thing is, is that your she who knows is not something that you're putting out there until probably one of your last plays. Be vigilant about it as well. You don't want to get caught flat, uh, caught flat footed where you're playing a 10 point card uh, and going to still lose the round. Uh, but she is helpful uh, to most degrees. The she who knows you want to play late. You usually on red coin or blue coin want to play your Siri and protect that Siri. Now there are decks out there that are going to crap all over Siri. And if you don't have the support cards like a rush or um you know pact or parasite or defender to hide her behind it might be a tough go you might not have to be completely married to the whole siri dash prob um, concept but i mean this deck operates like a standard keltulis list the only difference is is that you've got a lot more engines with the witch apprentice and you have the she who knows which creates an incredible amount of pressure uh in round two should she survive through it but if you're in round two you're probably bleeding and then while you're bleeding, you're one of your last cards, you're going to play a she who knows on that populated row. So that short round three is going to be even more taxing to your opponent because you're going in with a 10 point head start. If you're playing against Koshe, heat wave the, Koshe, uh, heat wave the she who knows because that's in there. And Parasite uh, and Wrath the, the Koshes as they come out. There's no locks in this. And that is something that I think in my head I might take out Maxi Van, Dre uh, Van uh, Dekar and look for a Doragari and make some concessions elsewhere, but I don't think that I need to right now. But it is certainly something that is in the, on the menu should there be more cards that require locks. But as it stands right now, this list that I'm running has been very, very resilient to uh, decks that run orders or whatever. Anyways, uh, we'll see what happens, friends. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a few games that I played with this list at the end of this game, at the end of this video, rather. And uh, in the meantime, if there's any suggestions you have for this deck list, please let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel, please. It really, really means a lot to me if you do. This is Flake. Catch me on twitch.tv slash watchflake or on Twitter at watchflake. Be kind to one another, friends. I love you. I got your back. I'll see you soon. Adios. Anything that's lock and control and lock and control, people are going to probably lose their minds over. Does this deck even run Naglefar? It does. I just never find it. Maybe I should have kept that, but I got another Purify instead, so we're okay. lurking all morning damned meetings how have the games been so far uh not bad actually there's been not bad I'm a great eye for faces. i want to see how they respond to this save me some time. i legit want to see if they have a response for this 
Because this might be me fishing out their Horsen, which is a pretty good card to get from them. Like, if I get this to pop off on Red Coin, it's all just bonus gravy. But they have to horse in it. Looks like they might have trouble fucking doing it. They might have to put some work into it. Yeah. Marcus takes purest tears, purest in all that. Like, do you have another one? What about Philippa for Siri? Uh, it's totally possible, but if they do uh, Philippa the Siri, I have a parasite for it, and then I get I basically traded their uh, their Philippa for a parasite, which is pretty good. I'm hoping that they just sort of get out of the round. What's Flake's favorite faction? My favorite faction in reality is Nilfgaard. Monsters used to be my favorite faction, but I kind of got bored with them. Like, they don't really have a very fun playstyle anymore. Like, when it was, like, Deathwish stuff, like, that was cool. But One that ain't a thing anymore. Is another man's ripe patch for harvest. Well, now if they want to, if they want to Philippa, they can't do it anymore. So, suck my nuts. pre vi Deathwish was really good. That was my least favorite faction in, like, I mean, okay. It's a two-parter. Number one, the least favorite faction I hate to play is Northern Realms. I hate playing Northern, Northern Realms. Not a big fan of playing Northern Realms. Uh, besides that, I would say probably... See what we're getting before we draw a card. It's kind of lame. Oh, big time. But uh, Skellige is my most hated faction. I just hate Skellige in general. I went with the wave on this. We're just waiting a little bit. I want to see if he dumps more coins into it. Actually, Aimless Wrath is just as good. Woo! Hanzo! What's up, buddy? My favorite faction is Lilfgaard, and my most hated faction is Lilfgaard. See, Lo Jack Lockjaw actually makes a very good point. I, I am similar in that sort of train of thought, where it's like, fuck Nilfgaard, but goddamn, it's fun to play. It's just the truth. It's the truth. 
How do I say no to this hand? Well, I can maybe say no. What I worry about, frankly, is the Philippa nonsense. We're gonna not let that happen. NG is blue in, ma in, in magic? Yeah, so that's a good uh, comparison. NG is blue-black, I would say. I'd say it's more blue-black or blue-black-white, like an Esper or a Demir. Card manipulation, control, removal, shit like that. We really liking Nature's Gift in the rel Religion deck, Eternal Flame. Uh, but don't think that it will take me high in ranks. Nature's Gift is not bad. Nature's Gift can probably bring you to pro rank. I think they're trying to get a Philippa set up. No, dwarves do not qualify for childcare tax relief. Insta jam this out. Imagine his deck is running an Earden. That doesn't bother me terribly. I don't know where Kaltulus is going to do something. I also have a dwarf deck, but I uh, but don't know about it. It got it from Plaguewent.com. So dwarf decks are okay. They just suffer really hard in an inch, like in in an, in a control meta. Um, plus, they get out greeted. I find by a lot of decks out there. They're kind of in a bad spot. Okay, so he's trying to line up a Philippa, and we're not going to allow that. I think he's trying to get a Philippa going. I need him to play a Jacques or just to put some stuff on the board.
I know there's a Philippa in his hand. There's got to be a Philippa in his hand. Yep, didn't think you got it. Sweet Delio. Hey, sweet shoes, bro. Um, no, actually, they're terrible. God, pain. And Rumblin', you know that Saku Koivu jersey that I wore at game one and game five, where the Habs both won? That's my secret weapon. I haven't used it yet. I didn't use it when I we watched uh, when uh, I was watching the Winnipeg series. I haven't. I did not wear it for the Vegas, so it's been charging up its power. Is that a fresh cut? It is a fresh cut. I don't know how I feel about it, but for now it's okay. His hand is kind of meh. I need my Naglfar to really hit a home run. There's so much Koshe out there right now. Ah, uh, he didn't flip. He didn't flip it. I don't know why he wouldn't flip it, but he didn't flip it, so I get to use my ability. Now you flipped it. I guess he's gonna run riders now. Opponent is deciding on what, man? What are you deciding on already? What could possibly force you to decide? Naglfar? Gales? Maxi, okay. Jack Lockjaw. Jack, I, I, you, you stream, don't you? You smell right with fear, little one. playing this round very poorly but I do I wouldn't say it would be poorly there's nothing wrong with that We've got the button for the she who knows. Holy shit, it's Arcaspor! It's Arcaspor! He might pass, and I want to save this hound. But then again, if he's playing she who knows, I don't think they pass. But might as well get this set up. I got a 
bad feeling about this. Show me what you got. We have summoned Larry. I only approach streaming and YouTube with hobby level commitment. Look at this bad boy. Not can stop me. Look at that bad boy. I don't think it's Koshe time yet. Well, Koshe is what? Adrenaline 3 or 4? It's Adrenaline 3, right? Gonna do top 5 most fun decks? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Some of the top some of the top lists I'm working on, I've got a whole bunch of lists. Hey, my eyes are down here. I think we naggle. Time. You want to continue? Let's keep going, buddy. Uh, some of the other lists I'm working on are uh, top five changes we need to see. Stuff on, on that list are stuff like cloggers should shuffle the card in instead of putting it on top. That's one of the lists I'm working on. Um, another one is... Top five big swing bronzes. Alchemist, Viper Witcher, things like that. I've got top five archetypes needing love. I've got top five cards desperate for a buff. Top five cards that are just waiting to be really good. I need this Wrath, I think. I only have the opportunity to kill one Koshe. Please unlock that. 
Purify. Ah, uh, fuck me. Congrats to the Habs. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.